Today we're going to be talking about how to use the alternating series estimation theorem to approximate the sum of the series and to find the remainder of the approximation. And in this particular problem, we've been given the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the quantity negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 power times n squared divided by 10 to the n power. For reference here, I've written the alternating series estimation theorem, which we'll get to in a second. We really only need this to find the remainder term, r sub n. For now, to find the approximation of the series, what we need to do is list out the first several terms of this series so that we can find the sum correct to four decimal places. So if we plug n equals 1 into this series, this exponent here on the negative 1 will become 1 minus 1, which is 0. Negative 1 raised to the 0 power is just 1. Plugging in here for n squared, we get 1 squared, or just 1, divided by 10 to the first power, so we just have 1 tenth. So our value here is 1 tenth. When we plug in n equals 2, we'll get negative 1 raised to the 2 minus 1, or negative 1 to the first power, which will just give us negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 squared is negative 4, divided by 10 squared. So we get negative 4 over 100 n equals 3, if we keep going here, is going to give us positive 9 over 10 to the third, or 1,000. And we could keep computing our terms. But remember that the problem has asked us to find the sum of the series correct to four decimal places. So we're going to need to turn each of these terms into a decimal value. So let's look here at 1 tenth. Our decimal value is going to be 0.1. Our decimal value for negative 4 over 100 will be negative 0.04. Our decimal value for 9 over 1000 will be 0.009. And if we keep including the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th terms, what we get is negative 0.0016 for the 4th term. We get positive 0.00025 for the fifth term. We get negative 0.000036 for the sixth term, and positive 0.0000049 for the seventh term. Now remember, we're looking to approximate correct to four decimal places. So if we basically take a series here of partial sums, we start adding all of these decimals together here. If we take 0.1 and we subtract 0.04, what we get here is 0.06, that's the sum of the first two terms. If we add to that 0.009, the sum of the first three terms gives us 0.069. When we subtract from that 0.0016, we get 0.0674, which is the sum of the first four terms. And then when we add to that 0.0025, we get 0.06765. Now we've already gotten one decimal place past the first four decimal places, but we want to make sure that if we continue adding and subtracting terms in our series from this sum that we aren't affecting the fourth decimal place. So we go ahead and subtract 0.000036 and what we get is 0.067614. Now the reason that it's helpful to do that is because as you can see, when we had this value here, our five in this fifth decimal place would have rounded this fourth decimal place up to a seven and we would have 0 0.0677 for our first four decimal places. But now that we've subtracted our sixth term here, you can see that we're not going to be rounding up because the value in the fifth decimal place is a one, leaving our first four decimal places as 0 0.0676. If we add to this sum the seventh term in our series, what we get is 0.0676189. And what we can see is that that fifth decimal place is still holding as a one. Even if we use the eight to round it up to a two, it's not gonna be rounding up our fourth decimal place. So we can conclude that the terms past this point are no longer going to be affecting our fourth decimal place. That's as far as we had to go to make sure that our fourth decimal place would stay intact at a six. 
if you remember correctly, this is the last term that affected our fourth decimal place. So what we want to say is that the sum of the series, we'll call it S sub 6 because we used the first six terms to get the fourth decimal place accurately. We'll say S sub 6 is equal to approximately 0 0.0676. Now at this point, we have our sum correct to four decimal places, the sum of our series, but we don't know how accurate this approximation is as an approximation of the exact sum of the series. In order to find out how accurate this approximation is, we need to use the alternating series estimation theorem. What that tells us, what the theorem tells us, is that if we have a sum, and we'll call that sum s, and that sum is the sum of an alternating series where we have negative 1 to the n minus 1 power times some series b sub n here, if s is the sum of that alternating series, and if the term b sub n plus 1 is always less than or equal to the b sub n term, and the limit as n goes to infinity of the b sub n series is equal to 0, then our remainder term satisfies this inequality here. So it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. All we really need to do is this. Notice that this infinite sum here in the alternating series estimation theorem has this negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 power multiplied by some series b sub n. Well, in our infinite sum, we have this this value here, negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 power, which makes the series alternate, but it's multiplied by n squared over 10 to the n power right here. It's multiplied by that. So we're going to carve that away from this alternating value right here, and we're going to call that b sub n. Whatever we can carve away from this negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 power is what we'll call b sub n. So we'll say this here is going to be b sub n. Given that we have this as b sub n, we need to prove two things. We need to prove that b sub n plus 1 is always less than or equal to b sub n, and we need to prove this limit here. So let's take it one piece at a time. We need to show that b sub n plus 1, or in other words, whatever we get when we plug n plus 1 into this b sub n value here, so we'll, it'll be n plus 1 squared divided by 10 to the n plus 1, that that is always less than or equal to b sub n, which is just n squared over 10 to the n. How do we show this? Well, if we write out the first several terms of each of these series, we'll be able to compare the two and see if the terms in this series are always less than the corresponding terms in this series. So if we plug in n equals 1 to our b sub n plus 1 series, we'll get 1 plus 1, which is 2, squared, which is 4, divided by 10 to the 1 plus 1, or 10 squared, and we'll get 10 squared there. If we plug in n equals 2, we'll get 2 plus 1 is 3, squared is 9, divided by 10 to the 2 plus 1, or 10 cubed. And if we plug in n equals 3, we get 3 plus 1 is 4, squared is 16, divided by 10 to the 3 plus 1, or 10 to the 4th power. We need to make sure that each of these is either less than or equal to what we get when we plug in 1, 2, and 3 to this second series here. So we want to say less than or equal to, we plug 1 into this series here, we get 1 squared in the numerator, we get 10 to the first power in the denominator. If we plug in 2, we get 2 squared in our numerator, which is 4, divided by 10 squared in our denominator. If we plug in 3, we get 3 squared in the numerator, which is 9, divided by 10 to the third in our denominator. Now, if we just do the division for each of these terms on our calculator, what we find is that these inequalities are in fact true. The terms on the left are in fact always less than or equal to the terms on the right. So that shows us that b sub n plus 1 will always be less than or equal to b sub n. So that's the first part of our alternating series estimation theorem. The next part is proving that this limit, that the limit of b sub n as n goes to infinity is equal to zero. So for that part, we're just going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n, or in our case, n squared divided by 10 to the n power, 
If we evaluate this at some very large number, we plug in, you know, 1 million or 10 million on our calculator, what we find is that while n squared is increasing very quickly, 10 raised to the n power is increasing much, much faster, and therefore, since the denominator will be significantly larger, then the numerator will have some much smaller constant value in the numerator and some extremely large value in the denominator, this is just going to tend toward 0, and the limit will be 0. So, in fact, we have proven that the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n is equal to 0. Both of those parts are true. So given that, we can use the alternating series estimation theorem to find this remainder term r sub n. Now when it comes to this remainder inequality, all we really need to look at is this value here that we found before. Remember we said that the sixth term of the series was the last term to affect our sum? Well, this is basically n equals 6 right here, and so what we want to do is we want to plug 6 in for n here, we want to plug 6 in for n here, and we want to plug 6 in for n right here. So what that leaves us with is the absolute value of r sub 6 is going to be equal to the absolute value of s minus s sub 6, which is going to be less than or equal to b sub 6 plus 1, or in other words, b sub 7. Now everything to the left of this less than or equal sign just says that the exact sum of the entire series minus the sum of the first six terms is equal to the remainder when we're approximating the sum after six terms. So we can use either one of these, either the absolute value of s minus s sub 6 or r sub 6, and we really just want to use r sub 6. So we're going to say the absolute value of r sub 6 is less than or equal to b sub 7. Now remember we have a value for b sub 7. We got it in this column here that I erased when we plugged 7 into our b sub n series up here. And what we got for b sub n was 0 point and then 5 zeros, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 9. And so we just take that value for b sub 7 that we already found and we say that that's going to be greater than or equal to r sub 6. Now what these two things tell us together is that the sum of the first six terms, the approximation of the sum of the first six terms, is 0 0.0676 when we round to four decimal places with a remainder on that approximation less than or equal to 0 0.0000049. In other words, this gives us an idea of how accurate this estimation of the sum is compared to the exact sum. In other words, if we just sum up the first six terms of the series, the difference between the sum of the first six terms and the sum of the entire infinite series, every single term in the infinite series, they're only going to be different by this value here. So it goes to show you that summing up only the first few terms of an alternating series like this actually gets you very, very close to the exact sum of the entire infinite series. We're only off by this point 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.000049 value. So that's how you use the alternating series estimation theorem to find the sum correct to a certain number of decimal places and get an idea of the remainder estimate. In other words, how accurate your sum is compared to the sum of the entire infinite series.